In this video, we will show or prove that when a linear transformation is represented in the component space with respect to an eigenbasis, that is a basis consisting of a full set of eigenvectors of the linear transformation, the resulting matrix is diagonal. And we have already seen this in a couple of examples, but in this video, we will give a very general explanation for why this is always true, and a very general explanation indeed. You may have noticed that we like to illustrate concepts in linear algebra with very specific examples. But at the same time, we emphasize that linear algebra is a very general subject that studies all kinds of objects and, of course, all sorts of linear transformations. So every once in a while, it's good to take a step back and to try to make a very general argument that applies to all sorts of vectors, all sorts of linear transformations, and even for any dimension. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. And that will be excellent practice for wrapping our minds around the generality of linear algebra and being able to make very general sorts of arguments. And you will see that sometimes the more general the context, the easier it is to make the argument because you're not distracted by any of the details of a particular example. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to look at a very general linear transformation T and not specify anything about this linear transformation, except that it has a full set of eigenvectors. Now, this will also be a very general linear space. We're not saying whether it's geometric vectors or polynomials or vectors in Rn or any other kind of vectors. It's, this is a very, this is a completely general space and its dimension is n. This space is n-dimensional. Now that's how our, that's how general our argument will be. Now what are we going to do? We're going to pick an eigenbasis. In other words, we'll populate this basis with the eigenvectors of the linear transformation. Now we usually denote eigenvectors by the letter V. So let's do that now. And we'll call it V1, V2, and then it's customary to put dot, 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 Vn. These are our n eigenvectors of this linear transformation. And sometimes this dot, dot, dot is not very convenient. Uh, it's perfectly fine in this case. So scientists have found, mathematicians have found other uh, forms of notation, other types of notation that helps you avoid this. But this is perfectly good for our current purposes. Now corresponding to these eigenvectors are the n eigenvalues, lambda 1, lambda 2, and of dot, 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 lambda n. These are the n eigenvalues. And you, of course, remember the strategy for constructing this matrix. To every column, uh, every column corresponds to a vector in the basis. And to construct the column, you have to apply the linear transformation to the vector and then decompose the result with respect to the same basis. Now, it seems like we'll be completely lost because we're not able to apply this transformation in a very specific sense. Why? Because we don't have a specific linear transformation. All we know is that we have to apply the linear transformation T to V1 and then decompose this vector with respect to the same basis. Now how are we going to do that? If we don't know what space we're dealing with, the dimension, the kinds of vectors, or even the linear transformation. Well, we know the one thing that we really need to know to accomplish this task. We know that T of V1, by the very definition of what it means to be an eigenvector, is lambda 1 times V1. Because being an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1 means that when you apply the transformation to this vector, you get this multiple of the input vector itself. So T of V1 actually equals lambda V1. And now we have to decompose lambda v1 with respect to the same basis. And again, for a moment you might be thinking, well, how am I going to do that? I don't know what the vectors are. I don't know anything about this. How, how do you expect me to come up with specific coefficients, specific numbers to put in this matrix if I don't know anything? Well, you know just enough. And this is what I mean when I say that sometimes the more general the context, the easier it is to make the argument because you just have very little information so you know that you have to use that information. So if you have a vector that's lambda v1 
and you have to decompose it with respect to v1, v2, and so forth up to vn. Well, you know that all you need is just lambda 1 of this vector, because lambda 1 of v1 is precisely what we're trying to decompose. So our coefficients will be lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And of course, that decomposition is unique. I'll leave it up to you to explain to me why that decomposition is unique. So the first column is, there is no way around it. Lambda 1, 0, 0. That has to be the first column of this matrix. Let's move on to the next column. And I think by now you're, you're, you see what's going to happen. Because of course T applied to V2 is lambda 2 V2. And now we have to decompose this vector with respect to this basis. And of course that decomposition is 0, lambda 2, and then a bunch of zeros and zeros all the way to the end. So what we found is that it's 0, lambda 2, and then a bunch of zeros all the way to the end. And of course it would be the same for lambda 3, lambda 4, and for the last one, let's just do it for the last one and see what we get. Let's put, replace the 2's with the n's. Okay, not bad, not great, but not bad. All right, there we go. And let's now put dot, 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 because we're skipping everything in the middle. And here's what we're going to get in the last column. Well, you see what we're going to get. We have to decompose this vector with respect to this basis. And of course, it's none of any of the first n minus 1 vectors and lambda n of the last one. So the coefficients are a bunch of zeros followed by lambda n. So 0, 0, all kinds of zeros lambda sub n. And there you go. We have constructed the matrix representing this general linear transformation in this totally general vector space of an arbitrary dimension n with respect to an eigenbasis. And the result is a diagonal matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues on the diagonal. So how easy was that?